Welcome back, everybody, to the first run of Faster Than Light. I am your host, Alexander Frost, and this is episode two. And when last we left off, we completed our first major tutorial. Well, actually, the only major tutorial in the game. Ha, oh, lols. Um, we named our first crew, and we have begun the adventures of our very first ship, the Solar Light. So first we have a little bit of exposition here. The data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. You need supplies for the journey, so make sure to explore each sector before moving on to the next. But get to the exit before the pursuing rebel fleet can catch up. Tip! Boarding. If you're having trouble with boarders, fight within the med bay. If all else fails, vent the rest of the oxygen out of the ship. Believe it or not, that is the best strategy you could ever come up with. Now, something I didn't get to actually show you initially in um, the tutorial is if you press the Open All button first, what will happen is all the inner doors will open and then all the outer doors will open. And fortunately, since the game is paused, no oxygen is going to be lost unless I unpause. So if I just click Close Doors, we're fine. So first order of business, I need my weapon systems back online. So the Artemis and the Burst Laser, I want those back online. Well, we start the game with 16 fuel, 8 missiles, no drone parts, no surprise there. 1 shield unit, 30 scrap. <sighs> and only 3 crew members and a long haul ahead of us. First of all, Sation is going to be our shield operator. She's going to be the one that keeps our shields functioning and fed. It's going to be our weapons man. I'd like to have four people on board so I can have someone in the engine room, but what can you do? So, upgrading each of these systems, something I never actually got to show you before, will have different effects. By upgrading the shields, if we can upgrade it two times, we can have two shield bars, but that's going to cost 50 scrap. Ugh. But it is paramount that you have at least four shield units by the time you reach the final boss fight, so this is a necessity. The engines. By upgrading them, we will increase our dodge, and we will actually decrease the amount of time it takes us to charge up our FTL, making escapes quicker. Also bear note that the more of these you have upgraded, the longer it'll take for that system to be damaged. So right now, the oxygen system is in critical condition, because one hit, it shuts off. Upgrading it, though, will actually bump our oxygen refill rate, which is good. This is the next system we need to upgrade as quickly as possible, depending on what weapons we get. So it's kind of important, but kind of not. Upgrading the med bay will actually increase the healing boost. So right now it's only times one. So that basically means if I put everyone in med bay, opened all the outer doors, the med bay would heal them just enough to keep them from losing health, from the vacuum of space, which is cool. But if boarders get in and start attacking us in the med bay, they'll start losing health. With a health boost of 1.5, they won't lose health while they're being attacked and venting oxygen into space. So generally, two is about where I like to keep it. Upgrading the piloting systems will make auto evasion much more, well, easy. Better chance of it happening. Upgrading the sensors, right now we can see our own ship interior. Upgrading it again will let us, let us see the enemy ship interior, which is useful for targeting... Um, some weapons actually let us target enemy crew. And then, of course, at level 3 we can see their power usage. I don't find that useful, so I won't use it. Door system. Upgrading these will actually give us blast doors, which will make it harder for boarders to get in, as well as impede fire. And there will be fire. Generally speaking, you want to have this at level 3 by the time you get to the last system, but it's not critically important. Right now we have 8 units of power in our reactor. Right now it's only going to cost us 20 units per bar, but once we get to here, it's going to cost us more, and then it'll cost more here and here, so there you go. We can have up to, I can count, 8 crew member on board, which is good, very good, but right now we've only got 3. And finally, we have our weapon systems, what drones we have, our cargo, and our augmentations. We have nothing! We have nothing! But it's okay, that's 
Now, generally speaking, I like to avoid spending my scrap unless absolutely necessary, so I kind of like to wait until I move into the next system. Ah. Nebulas are very, very dangerous. Nebulas disrupt sensors, and there's also a risk that when you jump into it, you'll run into a natural hazard, an ion storm, which fucks with your energy systems. I like to avoid nebulas whenever I can. Hopefully, I can make the jump from here to here. I'm fairly certain I can, so I'm not going into the nebula. It's just not going to happen. We have a first major encounter, a forward scout for the Rebel fleet. They know we're here, and they're powering up their FTL to escape. If they get away, they'll report our position to the enemy fleet. We don't want to let that happen. So first order of business, I'm going to have the Artemis target their engines. If those are out, they can't jump. Their shields are only level 1, and we have a burst laser, which actually fires two shots. So provided the two shots don't miss, we should be able to punch right through their shields and disable them. Fingers crossed. And the Artemis also goes first. It charges much more quickly. So, torpedoes away. Uh-oh. Something I should have mentioned that was a good hit. This beam weapon that they have cannot pierce shields. The only way it can pierce shields is if the shield itself is down. And since we only have one shield unit, their heavy laser was able to disable it. So that kind of works against us. Uh, let's target their weapon systems for now. I think their lasers are going to be out of sync. Yes. Oh, they are hosed. They are super hosed. Well, one more missile for you, and we can call this a win. Missiles very rarely miss, but when they do, it's frustrating. The ship breaks apart, and you are relieved to know that you are still one step ahead of the fleet. We got two fuel from it, a drone part, and some scrap. Very nice. Well, our only option is basically to jump over here, so we'll jump over here. Now, whenever you jump to a new system, if you see your ship appear in the center of the screen, that means you're either going to encounter nothing, or a random choice that doesn't involve another ship, usually. If it appears kind of off to the left, you're encountering a ship, so... kind of be wary. You arrive at the system and are hailed by the Loyalist Settlement. Nice! Upon hearing of your quest, they offer you supplies. We got some fuel, more scrap, and a drone part. Alright. I can dig it. Uh, from here we have actually four different choices. We want to explore the system as much as possible and get as much stuff as we can. So we're actually going to go up here first. The enemy fleet should show up soon. You recognize the ship as, be as well known for being a slave trader. He hails you and offers you laborers for cheap. Now, we have three choices. We can buy a slave for 44 scrap. We can attack them, or ignore them and continue on our way. Now fortunately they're offering us a choice. Sometimes they'll attack you and say, give us someone and we'll let you go. What I want to do is I want to attack, because if I can damage them enough, they may give me a crew member for free. And uh, that is what we want. Oh, you have a naughty naughty laser system. A naughty naughty missile, rather. You know what? I just thought about it. I probably should have... I can totally retarget. There we go. The Artemis should fire first. <laughs> probably not. We'll probably fire at the same time. Mm. Yep! Nope, they're slightly ahead of me. Ah! Lost my first laser, but it's okay. They'll give us one of their slaves as tribute, and if we kill them, well... We accept the offer. Thank you. Looks like Thet took a little bit of a beating, but it's okay. And we got ourselves an Engi crew member. Let's go ahead and go to the ship here and take a look at our new crew member. This is Henrik Astid, an Engi. It is unclear if the Engi are partly organic or entirely machine. But it is known that they make exceptional engineers. Their repair speed is doubled, but their combat damage 
is have. So they're actually great engineers. And you, sir, I want you in the engine room as soon as possible. I should have mentioned this before. Every crew member has these five little meters here, each one representing a different system. The first one is piloting. The second one is engine, shields, weapons. I said five, but not. I meant six. The wrench icon is repair, and the fist icon is hand-to-hand -hand combat. As each of these tasks are performed, they become more proficient in them. Me being the pilot, my proficiency as a pilot is going to improve as we get in combat and dodge shots and such. The Engi here, as uh, we dodge shots and such, is going to become a better engineer. Uh, Seishin's going to become good with uh, the shields and so on and so on and so forth. This is the enemy fleet chasing us. We don't want them to catch us. In the next jump, this is how far they will go. Now, fortunately, this nebula should slow them down a bit. If we try and jump to a node that's been taken over by them, we'll be in danger, so we don't want that to happen. We want to stay one step ahead of them if we can. You discover a nearby planet specked with settlements, although they no don't respond. Okay, that's good because I forgot to power up my laser. <laughs> I'm I want to hit both of these if I can. So I'm going to. I'm hoping. I didn't send that to the to the med bay. Hmm. Scans reveal a large asteroid field in the vicinity. Short range scanners may discover useful materials while we wait for the FTL to recharge. Normally I would say avoid the asteroid field because every time I go into one my luck is terrible, but every so often it's good. And we are early enough in the game that I can have, I can take a hit. It's cool. Ah So there's a pirate ship hiding. Whoops. Well, asteroid fields present their own unique dangers. Asteroids will constantly pummel our two ships. We want to get out of here as quickly as possible. And I need to take his weapon systems down as soon as possible. Because he has a nasty little teleport bomb. So it's not the bad kind. Ah. Oh. Normally, I don't accept pirate offers. However, they are offering us a free augment. I don't know what it is, but I'll take it. Now, we can't actually look at it from here. The best we can do is wait patiently for our FPL to recharge. So while we do that, that, I'm sending you to the next thing. Because I want you to live. Okay, you're all healed up. I'm actually going to power down the med bay and use the extra power to get my shields back up. Or not my shields, to boost my engine efficiency. Yes, while you're in dangerous areas, you can't upgrade your ship, so just remember that. We're safe! Oh, a distress beacon is coming from a civilian ship. It is being chased by a pirate. We could aid them or stay out of it. We're heroes. We'll do it. You power up their weapons and engage. You power up your weapons and engage the pirate ship. Ooh, they've got ion cannons. That's not good, but that reverse ion field could come in handy. Actually. First laser. Actually, just everything targets their weapon systems, because... Oh, I hate ion. And it's gonna fire before I do. He's gonna fuck with my shields. Okay, I got lucky. I got really lucky. No, no, no Artemis. Lasers. Just the burst laser. Because I'm kinda low on this. Alright, we got some scrap, we got some fuel. Did the civilians stick around to help us? It seems... Oh, the crew didn't survive, but we did get some materials, so we got some more missiles and scrap, and that's good! So, what is this reverse ion field? What is this all about? 
Protects your ship from ion damage, giving a 20% chance to negate it entirely. I'm not overly worried about this, so when I get to the next shop, I'm gonna sell it. So that's... that's free scrap right there. Speaking of which, where are the shops? Should've run into one by now. I gotta hurry up and get out of this system. Because there's always at least two shops in the system, so... You spot a small rebel ship nearby, it appears to be refitted for transport rather than combat. It doesn't seem to want to engage you or your ship. If we leave it be... It may try to report our position. But every time I've attacked them, they've never seemed to give me anything. Well, the enemy fleet's already on our tail, so I could technically, I say, no, let's not take the risk. Prepare to secure their cargo by force. And it looks like they don't want to fight. They're going to try to run away. Oh! They've got a drone system! They've got a little drone that's going to be firing at us constantly. <laughs> Hell, I know what to do with that. Oh, nope, retarget. <laughs> uh, I'm not worried about their drone now, because their drone is firing a beam. The beam can't penetrate my shields. Ooh, that had to hurt. As long as I can keep their weapon systems down, there's pretty much nothing they can do to me. It's literally just going to be a case of charging up the burst laser, firing the burst laser. They're done. Their goose is cooked. I'm not even going to waste a missile, I'm just going to launch another laser at them. And they're done. Their goose is cooked. Ho 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 ho! Searching the remains, you find the cargo was military grade drone schematics. You bring them aboard. We have a drone repairer. Nice. Now, we don't have a drone control system, so there's not really much we can do with it. But if we did have one, we could deploy this, and every time a system is damaged, it will automatically activate fix whatever's damaged. There's a store. Off we go. Now what deals are available? What do you have for us? We have a few interesting items. We have... Oh, sweet. We have a cloaking system and a drone control system. Both of these are systems that we need in order to get the... Um, one of the three different achievements. I'm gonna go on ahead and sell the reverse ion field. I don't need it. It's worth 30 scrap. I'm not terribly big on repair drones, so again, I'm going to go on ahead and sell it. I am, however, gonna buy this cloaking device. It's expensive, but I think it'll be worth it. Let's go ahead and fix the hull, buy an extra missile, buy up all their fuel. I would like to get some more crew member, believe it or not, but I don't have enough time. I don't have enough scrap to get everything, and with the enemy right behind me, I haven't got time to stop. Now there's a distress call over here, and there's a chance that it could be a trap. It's a trap! It could be a trap. It really could be a trap. We you power this, and power the cloaking, shield, the cloaking system. This will only give us about five seconds of cloak time, but while we're cloaked, enemy weapon systems don't charge because they can't lock on to us. So this could give us an advantage. Normally what I like to do is I like to try, I'd probably swing through here, here, and then get to the distress call, but with the enemy fleet so close, I'm going to swing to the distress call, and if I can, swing to here, here, and then here. I totally didn't go to the distress call when I said I would. The nearby plant shows signs of habitation and great beauty. Rudimentary automatic. Oh, oh, there's a quarantine going on. Well, there's not much we can do about that, except to do what it says and just move on. We'll have just enough time to do the distress call, which could be a trap, and then get to the exit. A 
It appears the distress beacon is coming from the surface of the nearby moon. Your sensors are picking up a single white form. We could go down to the surface to investigate or ignore the signal. This could net us a potential crewman, so... You find a man living alone in a cave. He appears to be from the red ship, and he's been down here for many years. He looks healthy, but his mental state is questionable. So, we have the choice of either bringing him back in hopes that he'll be okay, or leave him here and not take a risk. Now, if we take him with us, there's a chance that he could kill somebody. I'm hoping... Seems he was in worse health than we first thought. He did not survive the trip to the ship. That's fine. He didn't kill anybody, but he didn't survive. So, sad, but there's not much we can do about it. At least he didn't kill anybody. That's what's important. I would have liked to have had him as a crewman, but... You've arrived at the long-range beacon. When the FTL drive is charged, you can jump to the next sector. Whenever you go to an exit, provided you are not being attacked by the Rebel fleet, there will always be some kind of event happening, so... Sometimes it's not very good, but... I could sell my military-grade explosives for scrap. I like my missiles. If I had more energy weapons, I would sell them, but I'm just going to ignore the station. There's no point. We're gonna jump to the next sector. This layout changes every time you play. Now. Civilian sectors are easy and much less dangerous. Red sectors, hostile, much more difficult. Nebulas, well, you already know how I feel about nebulas. I like to avoid them. So believe it or not, we're actually going to go to the pirate controlled sector. Because more risk, more reward. And as Northern Lion is fond of saying, who dares wins. Unfortunately for us, every time we jump into a new system, we won't be attacked right away, so you're always safe. A few years ago, this region was bustling with trade activity. Now it's overrun with bandits and marauders. We should tread lightly. We'll do the best we can. So if we pick up any distress calls, we can assume it's going to be a trap of some kind. Now, I don't have any scrap to go to the store, so we're actually going to go here, here, then here. Because we actually want some scrap before we go to the store. Distress beacon coming from a civilian ship. It's being chased. Well, of course we're going to aid them. Now, once again, they have a drone. Well, I don't see anything floating around. Oh, there it is. They have an anti-missile drone. So if I try and fire my Artemis missile, they'll just shoot it down. So what I want to do instead is target their shields. Actually... I want to target their drone control system with the burst laser. And if I can take it out, then I can safely fire the Artemis missile and disable their weapons. Oh, that's not good. Engineer man, I need you to fix the oxygen, please. Their weapons are offline. Concentrate on their shields. Or no better yet, return the favor since they decided it was a good idea to damage our life support system. And then just for the lulls, let's target their pilot. Unfortunately, they brought their drone control system back online, but I don't think they're going to be much of a threat for very much longer. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're going to die in a second. Fire the lasers! All of them! Oh, I should have mentioned before, you can choose auto-fire, which will make your weapons automatically target things, but you don't always want that to happen for cases like, oh look, they've got an anti-missile drone. The ship breaks apart, and you hasten to contact the civilians. We've got some scrap, we've got some fuel, we've got some missiles. Once again, the crew did not survive, so we are taking what we can get, and we're moving on. Let's head over here, see what we can find. We've got a pretty good bit of scrap, though, so that's good. You arrive and the screen lights up without warning. A nearby pirate seems to have advanced hacking tools and have tried to shut down your engines. Your crew manages to keep them barely operational and you move into attack. We got lucky. Oh, fuck, they've got a teleporter. 
No, wait, wait, wait. I have a cloaking device. Activate the cloaking device! With any luck, we'll be able to stop them from teleporting in. Because they will try. Well, it didn't work, but... Well, if that's the case, we can go on ahead and target the shield instead. Oh, shit. I don't have blast doors, so he just walked right in like he owned the place. Um... Okay, normally I would tell them to leave. Normally what I would do is have everyone retreat into here and then let him fight, but I don't want to run the risk of, you know... Wow, really? You missed all of those? It's alright. Just keep fighting. The two of you working together should be able to bring them down. Okay, they're done. Their goose is, like, officially cooked. Then I'll power that up, there we go, and then just cloak for the lulls, just to fuck with them again. Did I not? Oh, they've got some kind of ion system on board. Oh no, that's right, that's what happened. They kept our engines back on, they, they messed with our engines so I couldn't depower it like I wanted to. Oh no, that's what happened, my... <laughs> it's almost like I don't know what I'm doing. When I put in the cloaking device, it automatically pulled power from the available pool. That's what happened. So I'm going to actually need to upgrade. Well, first we'll go to the store, and we'll see what we can find, and then... So, yeah, that became an accomplished fighter, slightly. <laughs> Alright, depower, repower. Alright, here we go. The enemy fleet hasn't showed up yet. There's every chance that this distress call could net something good. It's worth the risk. It appears to be a distress beacon coming from the surface of a nearby moon. Oh, here we go again. You find a man living alone in the cave, la 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 la. Well, the last one died on the way up, so... Who dares wins? He improves immensely upon getting back to the ship. It might take him a while to be truly well again, but until then he seems to be happy as serving a member of your crew. Yes! Yes! Who are you, sir? You are Charles the Mantis. The Mantis disregard, Mantis disregard for individuality, individual lives lead to their evolution as a vicious warrior race. So they can do double damage in combat, in melee combat. They're great as boarders or defenders. They can move quickly, but their repair speed is brought down because they have sights for hands. But this is good. This is very good. Um, you know what? Go chat it up with that. <laughs> Alright, the enemy fleet, there they are. Let's get to the store. Because uh, if the enemy fleet gets to the store first, it shuts down, and anything that's in there is gone forever. A well-armed transport ship and a squadron of fighters are in over nearby. They're on. They are wary of your trustworthiness, but beggars can't be choosers. Weapons! Lots of weapons. Oh, lots of good stuff. Lots of good stuff. Oh my. <laughs> oh, I wish I hadn't bought everything I did at the store in the last sector if I'd have known this would be here. Ion cannons can disable systems without causing hull damage. I'm not worried about that. Hull beam is the most powerful when targeting large empty sections of a hull. This will do... One damage per room. I can actually, like, drag the laser across multiple rooms, but if I drag it across rooms that have no ship systems, I can do increased damage. Heavy laser... 
can wreak more damage than its smaller burst laser counterparts. This does more damage. I want this. But I want this a little bit more. Allows your ship to jump to any previously visited beacon. This is incredibly useful if you find a shop early, move far away, but then you want to jump back before the enemy fleet shows up. A drone recovery arm will let us grab drones if, um... Whenever you deploy a drone... Let's see, what is this? Yeah, non-destroyed drones will be retrieved when jumping, allowing, allowing their parts to be reused. I think you can also use these to pick up drones dr launched by enemy ships, too. And then the FTL Recharge Booster, which ups the recharge of the FTL by 25%. All of this is good stuff, and I have nothing to sell in return. I think more than anything, I want the Heavy Laser, just so I have another weapon that doesn't rely on my ammunition supply of missiles. So I want that. Uh, go ahead and fix everything. And then... Well, I've got enough fuel to last me, so go ahead and give me a missile, and then I'm gonna have to... Now I have to upgrade my reactor and my ship systems now. I can't wait anymore. Oh look! Target practice! An AI of a nearby small rebel scout immediately identifies you as a threat and engages. Well... So I can activate the heavy laser, but I have to shut off the Artemis first. So we're going to use the burst laser to cut through its shields, and then we'll use the heavy laser to target its weapons. Nice. Nice. Now, uh, if you could fix our lack of oxygen, that'd be great. Heavy laser charges a lot quicker, but only fires one shot, so it's not good for piercing shields. Alright, we got some scrap. That's good. Upgrade. Oh, wait, wait. Is there another store? No, there's not. I need... Oh, I, I can't upgrade that yet. I need more power. That, that, that is paramount. I need more power. So let's jump to here. Oh goody! A sun! The beacon is placed too close to a super giant class M star. The ship will gradually overheat until you get out of there or die. A pirate ship, apparently oblivious to the danger of the sun, moves in to engage. We have to fight for our lives before we burn to a crisp and periodically the sun will flare and unleash devastating damage to us. Cloaking will do no good, so I will cloak once, just to fuck with him. There, now they're harmless. Well, as harmless as harmless can be. With any luck, we can take them out before... No, nah, not before. There's going to be a flare beforehand. There's no way we're going to get out of here in time. These don't hurt. Why is it always the life support room? Okay, better plan. Three of you, get out of there. Open these doors and just vent the oxygen out of there. No oxygen, no fire. No fire, no problem. Don't break, don't bad. Ah, I want to wait for that to be gone before I move on. On fire, there we go. Don't jump yet. Pause. Close, close, close. 
Only two of you are going to be able to go in there, so you and Thet are going to go in there. You're going to take damage from it. It's going to suck. You're going to have to man up and take it. Okay, time to go. Uh, shit. It looks like I'm going to have to jump through that nebula to get to the exit. Unless I jump to here first. I have to go there, there, and then... I hate jumping through nebulas, I really do. I just hope I don't encounter another enemy ship. Yes, got lucky! Small pirate ship messages you. That sure is a shiny ship you got there. You fire a warning cross, shot across their hull, and they respond, Hey, no need for violence, it was just a comment. Ha ha ha. Uh, okay. So, while rooms are pink like that, uh, life support... Or while rooms are pink like that, there's low oxygen, so you kind of want to wait for those to upgrade. Is there a shop nearby? Damn, I was hoping I could actually get up to that system. I'm going to have to go through the nebula. I don't wanna! I don't like jumping through nebulas, Daddy. They make me nervous! Alright, you... I don't want you working on that. I want you there. You in there. As a matter of fact, since that has been damaged so many times, I want you in there. <laughs> They haven't targeted the shields. Heaven forbid they destroy our shields. There. Now at the very least, all of our weapons are online. Which is good. Watch it be an ion storm. No? We got lucky. Hmm. There's apparently a tourist destination. One of the ships offers a deal. Ten fuel for three missiles. You know, that's a pretty good deal. Well, it doesn't look like it can get to any of the shops. I'm, I'm willing to bet that this was probably where one of the shops was. So I can probably hit all three of these before the enemy fleet shows up. So... Let's do it. Upon completing your jump, you receive a message from a nearby ship. Greetings and welcome to our beacon. For a small fee, we will let you continue on your way. You pay their toll, but we can't because we don't have to scrap or reject the offer. So I'll fight your want, that's I'll fight your get. Oh, oh damn. You've actually got some pretty good weapons going for you. Basic laser, a teleport bomb. Yeah, we're going to do it best. Right away. Uh, and... Shit, I don't care what targets we want. Just, just break their ship, man. Just break the ship. Uh-oh. Okay, it missed. It missed. It's all good. We brought, we brought down their shields. If I'm lucky, I can... Perfect. Well, we got a missile for our trouble, a drone part, and some scrap. I could have gone better. Oh my, they are moving rather quickly. Hopefully the nebula will slow them down. Ha! Ah! Small hope. You arrive at the long-range jump beacon. The FTL drivers charge and you can jump to the next sector at any time. Apparently there's a battle taking place nearby. Someone is under attack by space pirates. Well, we are heroes after all. So into the fray we go. Oh, again with the teleport bombs. No, I don't like those. No, I don't like those. Missiles, target there. Burst laser, target there. And the heavy laser, I'll hold in reserve for the moment. I want to see what goes down first. I realize my engineer is injured, it's just going to have to wait for a minute. Just thought about it, I can totally shut that down, power that up, and then cloak. Okay, no, that's good. The shields are down. We took out our sensors, it's fine, I'm not worried about the sensors. 
The sensors can take the hit just fine. Looks like there's a fire in there. Did they make it? The sector has become increasingly dangerous for friends of the Federation. I think my crew can patch up some of your hull damage. Thanks. Wasn't that nice of them? They fixed our hull damage. That was nice of them. Alright, I'm actually going to go and be useful and fix the... Uh oh Hull breach! Station and I will fix the hull breach. Get healed up first. Okay. Now go and fix that. Oh man. Ah, oh, hull breach is fun. Alright, our sensors are back online. Why don't you get in there to get healed up too? Charlie, are you hurt? Very slightly. You are very slightly injured. I'm okay now, so off I go. He is okay now, so off he goes. He should be okay now, so off he goes. Depower, repower. Now from here we can choose to jump to the next sector. I'm gonna take a gamble, jump over here, then jump back. Because the event is done, so I can just get to the beacon and get out of here. You arrive and find a small research station putting out a distress signal. There is no response to your hails. It could be a trap. Something bad could be happening. Let's see what's going on. You dock with the station and see a frantic person banging on the airlock door. Once inside, he drops to the floor saying, My friends, they've gone insane, they're coming. You hand him a blaster and turn to see a number of people charging towards the ship. Oh, we have boarders. Okay, okay, no problem. No problem. Here's how we're gonna do. The cloaking device is absolutely useless in here. How we're gonna do is like this. If they want a taste, we're just gonna let them damage that all they want. I just thought about it. New guy, who are you? Huts or whatever the hell your name is, I want you in there. I want my new mantis in here. Because when they break through... So as you can see, we're taking no damage. We're healing up. So we are at advantage in here. Go ahead and close these doors. And then again, we just... Wait, patiently. All is well. Shield systems took a hit, though. So, it's not all bad. I think one thing we're going to do first is I'm going to go on ahead and improve this. Yes. Improve that. Give me another bar of power. That way, my oxygen levels replenish that much quickly, that much quickly, that much more quickly. Also, uh, systems have a habit of repowering themselves if they've sustained damage or after they've been repaired, so that's always a good thing. Wait, and who is someone? No, that's the captain's chair, that's just the captain's chair. So we have a new crew member by the name of Huts, I think it is? Hello, Huts. How are you doing, Huts? This is good. We have a new crew member. I want you in here, Huts. You're in charge of the... of the, the cloaking device. If it takes damage, I want you there to fix it immediately. So this is looking good. So we are actually going to be in danger. We're going to have a fight on our hands. Thought I'd be able to get back quickly enough. I thought the beacon. I thought the no Nova. Nova? The Nebula would slow them down, but it's okay. So, our best thing to do is. And we have people on board. 
Um, Charles, I kind of need you to help me. Missiles. Oh, that's bad. That is super bad. Okay, their weapons are offline. Shields are offline. Let's not target anything else. Shields are back up. Good job, Station. Unfortunately, because the Rebel Fleet is here, we don't have time to actually grab anything aside from one unit of fuel, so off we go to the next sector. <sighs> We're not going to the Rebel-controlled sector. We're going to the Mantis homeworld next. You've entered a poorly charted area of space known as the home to the Mantis. Ensure your hull plating is up to scratch and that you have enough fuel in the tank to make it through. I think I do. But I think that's where we're going to have to stop for today, boys and girls. This can be a long game. <laughs> this can be a very long game. So next time, we'll pick up from here, and we will try and make our way through the Mantis-controlled sectors with as little trouble as possible. Our next major upgrades definitely need to be the shield systems and the blast doors. So, until then, everyone.